I'm amazed how consistently we, uh, how consistently we get in the way of that. <laughs> it's just amazing. And I say we, I know I do. Uh, and it's, can I just be real plain? It's just dumb <laughs> to do that. And we do it, but man, Lord, help me, help me to get it. You know, just say, Lord, I, I can trust you. You got this. You got this. And uh, he's amazing. And he's, he's even helping us when we're, even when we're getting in the way. And even when we're not trusting, he's, uh, he's still so faithful, so gracious, isn't he? He's an amazing Savior. I have a friend, an evangelist friend of mine, uh, Stephen Manley, one of his phrases he used all the time. He said, what an amazing Jesus. He just is amazing. And uh, he doesn't want you trying to live this Christian life in your own strength. Aren't you glad? Amen. Oh, man. When I try to do it my way and my strength, it's, uh, well, she said it best, train wreck. And uh, Jesus wants to, by the power of his spirit, Fill us and help us. Amen? Amen? Father, we just thank you that you love us so much. We thank you for your love for us, Father. We thank you, Jesus, for the fact that you were willing to come and to die and to lay it all out for us. And that you rose again, you conquered death, hell, and the grave, and you made salvation possible. And you got the fellows together and told them, now I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I, it's important that I go away. And they couldn't figure it out, and they wanted you to stay, and you needed to go. And they didn't understand why in the world you would leave them and go to heaven. And, but they, they didn't fully understand that you were going to send the Holy Spirit, who would be you and them, and, and you are you and us. And that the outside God is the inside reality for us tonight. And that living for you, Jesus, is not something we're trying to do in our own strength. And it's not another act of religion. And we're not trying to be good enough because we know we're not good enough. But it's your, you're living your life out through us it, by your Spirit. Lord, we need to be filled with your spirit tonight. We need to be helped by your spirit. We need to be born of your spirit and led by your spirit and empowered by your spirit. And so, Jesus, help us get over this human-driven stuff and religion-based stuff and people-pleasing stuff and just get honest and open with you and just let you lead us and fill us and empower us. And then we'll be able to do what we can't do and go where we can't go and say what we'd have never thought to say. And best of all, Jesus, we can love like we never loved before. And we can love you back. It'll never be enough, but we can love you back and you can love us and the love of God can be poured out into our lives and then just go through us and touch other people. Uh, we praise you for that. Now, open our hearts and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. And all the people said, Amen. all right then. I heard from another preacher friend of mine today. He was at a Walmart. And there's this young mom there, single mom, uh, and he just ran into her in the parking lot. Not literally. <laughs> you know, they just saw each other. And uh, she looked real sad, and he just spoke to her about, uh, are you all right? Can I, can I pray for you? And then she just began to weep and unload her heart to him. And he said, what you need is Jesus. And she said, I sure do. So he led her to Jesus in the Walmart parking lot. Amen. And uh, said she was coming to the services tonight and bringing some, a couple, some of her family with her to the services they're having. And guess where that happened? You know, you can believe this. Las Vegas, Nevada. I didn't know they had Walmarts in Las Vegas, did you? <laughs> it might be the only place in America where they got a slot machine at Walmart. They got them everywhere else. Well, isn't that amazing? I just thought you'd be encouraged to hear that. We got a new little sister. We won't know her till we get to heaven, but Vivian will be there one of these days. Why? Because the Holy Spirit helped the intersection of a spirit-filled believer with somebody that needed help, and just like that. Holy Spirit. So you're not here by accident tonight either. And you say, well, it's not the biggest crowd in the world. And I know it was not the smallest crowd in the world either. I preach to the smallest crowd, so I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> at a revival a few years ago out in Kansas, one night we had six. Can you believe it? I preached to five other people. Well, I poured it on them too. I figured, well, you showed up, you get what you get. Amen? <laughs> but the Holy Spirit is here. Amen? Amen. Yeah, I was thinking about this service, and I was thinking about you, and thinking about me, and thinking about us, and I said, Lord, what, what would you want me to tell these folks tonight? I mean, really, I don't know what to tell them. What should I tell them? It was just almost, it wasn't audible, you know, but it was better than that. It was just in my spirit. He said, tell them be filled with my spirit. Just tell them be filled with my spirit. So I, I t I'm taking it literally. That's what he wanted us to talk about. Amen? Amen? 
And, and there's a neat little passage over in uh, Ephesians chapter, chapter 5, verse 18. I like it. We'll start at verse 15, and then we'll read to verse 18. And, and actually, we'll just kind of finish up at verse 21. And then, I just want to whet your appetite, because you're, you're going to love this. You're going to be so excited. I can't wait to see your faces light up with anticipation. When I tell you that in about three minutes, I'm going to give you a Greek lesson. Okay, nobody, nobody's face lit up on that. I'm a little disappointed. I'm going to anyway, and I hope you'll like it. I hope it'll be all right. Uh, some people say, well, it's all Greek to me. <laughs> I totally understand that, and I'll tell you why in a minute. Paul, writing to the church at Ephesus, chapter 5, verse 15 of Ephesians. Look carefully, then, how you walk. Not as unwise, but as wise. Making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. That's dissipation. That will destroy you. But be filled with the Spirit. Addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. That's good news, because if you can't do it with your mouth, at least you can do it with your heart. Amen. Amen. My dad never could make melody with his mouth. Uh, poor fellow. He, he's a preacher, 42 years. Couldn't man alive. Couldn't carry a tune in a number nine wash tub. But he could make melody in his heart. Amen. Now he's in heaven, so... He's probably singing better than he ever sang, looking better than he ever looked. Amen? I know he is. He's having a good time. Amen. All right. Making melody to the Lord with your heart and giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wow. What an amazing short passage. But what we're going to focus on is in verse 18. Be filled with the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Wow, we need to be filled with the Spirit. You know why? Because we can't live this life without the Holy Spirit. Uh, we, can't even, we can't even begin to be Christians without the Holy Spirit's help. Uh, the Holy Spirit is the one who brings us to an awareness that we have a need. I mean, it's the Holy Spirit that convicted us. He awakened us. Uh, he made the Bible come alive to us, and we said, Oh, man, I guess I am really a sinner. I guess I really am lost. I, I guess I can't really put this together. I guess step one is true. I am powerless. Every person who's a Christian today, walking with God, in a vital relationship with him, had a moment when they had to realize, I cannot do this. Uh, this is a, sort of a crude illustration, but when my little uh, granddaughter, my youngest granddaughter, uh, Mary Jane, Mary Jane Elizabeth, isn't that sweet? What? And she's a doll, too. Uh, she's, uh, she's six now, so she's well past this. But she's always been a pretty opinionated little girl. And, and when they were trying to potty train, train this girl, one day they had her sitting on the little potty there, and she was just really aggravated about the whole thing. And she looked at her mother, and she said, I just cannot do this. <laughs> when I heard that, I laughed. I thought, that's quite a sentence for a little kid. I just cannot do this. And I know I shouldn't have mentioned potty training in public, and my wife's not here. She's kind of fighting. She got a migraine later after supper, and so she's kind of fighting that off. But <laughs> she's not here to fuss at me. Of course, some of you women will tell her. I know you will. So uh, I'll tell her first. You don't have to bother. I'll just go in the trailer tonight after church and say, hey, I, uh, I had a potty training illustration tonight. And she'll go, oh, great day in the morning. Okay, so ladies rest. You don't have to worry. I just cannot do this. And the fact is, you know, I grew up in the church, my dad's a pastor and all that, and I found out that you can't do it because you've heard it. You can't do it because you've been exposed to it. You can't do it because some other people do it. You can't do it because you've had generations of believers ahead of you and your family. Listen, God doesn't have any grandchildren, dude. You, I mean person, people, dude. Dude is a good word, though, really, seriously. I'm too old to use it, but I like it, man. Dude just expresses a lot, you know, like, like, if, you're, like if you're really excited. Dude! Huh? Or, you know, a 14-year-old boy sees a real pretty girl, and he goes, dude. You know? Isn't it a great word? I mean, you can just, so many ways to use it. Like, are you you're excited? Dude! Are you, are, you, are you afraid? Dude! But, you know, it's just all in the inflection. All right, let's make a note. Let's... 
I got to tell you, uh, he doesn't have any grandchildren. So we come to this thing, and the Holy Spirit is the one who makes us aware of our need, and he shows us a Jesus who cares for us. And Jesus' big concern for the disciples was, as he was leaving them, that, that they wait until they were filled with his Spirit because they could never be his, fully his people and live it out in life without him right there with them every minute unless the Holy Spirit was in them. Well, that's true for us. We can't live this. This isn't about religion. It's not about Nazarene, Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, anything. It's about Jesus. It's about his Spirit living in us. And so he prayed they'd be filled with the Spirit. He, he prayed that the Holy Spirit would make them one. He prayed that the Holy Spirit would cleanse their hearts. He prayed that the Holy Spirit would empower them. You read the book of Acts, he did all that and more. Jesus even told them in John chapter 14, he said, greater things will you do than these. Talking about what he did. And I'm trying to wrap my head around doing one or two things that Jesus did. And he said we could do And the reason, he, and he said that because I go to my father. See, he said, listen, up until now, fellas, every time I get a half a mile away from you, you mess up. Okay? So when I leave here, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. So he's going to be with you every second inside of you. He will be me and you. I'm in you. And you're in me. And that's how you'll have the victory. Right? So when Paul gets over here on the epistles now, many, many years after Jesus talked to the fellas, then... He's talking about be filled with the Spirit. Well, it's time for your Greek lesson, and I, I hope that, that you won't get too bored with this. Uh, uh, and I, I'll tell you really, I'll tell you up front, uh, when I was in Bible college, I dropped Greek after two weeks. See, my, my roots are Appalachian roots. I, 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 have, I have rich Appalachian, Scots-Irish, hillbilly blood in me, and, it, and it's got a lot of cholesterol in it. It's like... You know, my blood goes through my arteries going, step aside, step aside, you know. <laughs> hey, man, boy, you eat grease your whole life, buddy. You eat stuff right and lard. I, I tell you, it'll do something for you. <laughs> and, uh, I mean, oh. but uh, so Greek, I mean, I went, I, 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 was, in, I was enthusiastic. I'm, I'm going to be a preacher. You know, God's called me to preach. So they said, well, take Greek, so. I sign up and I get in there and I'm, I mean, I immediately knew I was in the wrong place, you know, because, I mean, English is almost a second language to me, but I mean, Greek, are you kidding me? Now, here's a little thing. My wife was in that same class and she didn't drop it. She had four semesters of Greek, made straight A's. Uh -huh. And now you wonder, why did I marry her? That's one of them right there. Now, she can't remember anything about it now, but she was good when she was doing it. And, I, and the first date we had, I called my dad, and I said, he was in Georgia. I said, hey, I went out with the smartest girl in school tonight. And he said, no, you didn't. I said, yeah, I did. I said, she's a, she was a valedictorian in her high school class, and, and she's straight A's, man. She's it. He said, no, she's not. I said, what are you talking about? He said, Mike, she went out with you. How smart could she be? Isn't that great support? Thanks, Dad. really appreciate that. Well, he met her, and he loved her, boy. And she spoiled that old rotten guy pitifully. Yeah. And we never forgot that she was the smartest. But back to the Greek. Be filled with the Spirit. There's three things I want to tell you, and you're just almost going to want to shout out loud. You'll be so excited. All right, here's the first one. That thing there, be filled with the Spirit, imperative mood. Hmm. Okay. You know what imperative mood means? It's not a suggestion not a suggestion. He said, be filled with the Spirit. This is not an option. Believers, not an option. It's our privilege. It's our honor. We must do it. Be filled with the Spirit. It's not an option. It's imperative. Imperative means it's a demand. You must do this. Do this. And it's done, I like this, it's done by the authority of someone so great, more great, greater than we are who has power that we don't have, who has love that we don't have, or that we would ever, never have. That's who's doing the talking. Oh, man. You're not, still not real excited about it, but imperative mood. Still here? Okay. All right. It's not going to last long. So if you're going to get excited ever, you, you just got to, you know, this, this, little, this little lesson not going to last long. So come on, come on, show some enthusiasm. You know, I worked on this, and I, did, I double-checked to make sure I had it right. See, I'm not, the smart, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, 
But I do know how to get down the big, the big books that the, that the smart guys write. Okay. Imperative mood. Not a suggestion. Not an option. Be filled with the Spirit. Be filled now. Continually be filled. Present tense. <coughs> What's that mean? That means continuous action. It's really hard to translate. I mean, the experts say it's like a, this double, big, huge, fat, multi, big, you know, Greeks like that, they tell me. <laughs> I think the word for it. Uh, that one Greek word can mean so much, you know, and you, you know, a lot of times one of our words will mean one or two things, but Greek just explodes. And, and so right here, this is continuous action. It reflects a lifestyle. It, it also, it's like, be filled, continue to be filled, be filled while you're being filled, be filled while you continue to be filled. Just keep on being filled. Just be filled. Now that gets a little, that's a little awkward to try to say it that way, but that's what it means. Right now, be filled with the Spirit. Lord Jesus, fill me with your Spirit. Present tense, be filled, continue, live there. It, it really reflects lifestyle. Now, here's the, here's the point where a lot of Nazarene folks and a lot of other folks get hung up. They say, well, I had an experience at an altar. People in Nazarene culture say, well, bless God, I went to the altar twice. Really? Good for you, dude. I'm so proud of you. If you think two trips to a Nazarene altar gave you enough to get all the way to heaven, you are sadly messed up. Man, alive, what you ought to do is say, I'm going to ride the altar all the way to heaven. Now, that's where I'm at. I'm just saying, hey, I'm going to put a saddle on that thing, and I'm going to ride it home. Hey, all right. I mean, if the altar's where the victory is, but see, the altar's not where the victory is. The altar is just a symbol of the surrender we make to him. But that surrender is an ongoing thing. <laughs> I got married 43 years ago on a hot August afternoon in the longest Christian ceremony in the history of the church. It was too long. It was too hot. I was just said, let's just get this over with. I wish we'd eloped. You know, have a shower, send money. We're gone. We're out of here. No, we had this big elaborate thing. Three preachers, music. Oh, great, Scott. And now in my old age, I was sitting in a hotel room watching Say Yes to the Dress with my wife. I mean, really? Really? That's what, it, that's what it's come to now in your life? Huh? Say yes to the dress, what not to wear. Obviously, I don't pay any attention to that. You've seen how I dress, right? I got married. I got married. This, this August will be 43 years. Well, I got married. We had a ceremony. But, but that does not define our marriage. That defines the beginning of our marriage. That defines the the official solemnization of vows and exchange of vows and promises made. The last 43 years, we've lived out the marriage. Yeah. Right? Thank God. Smart girl paid for her mistake, but whew, I'm glad she's still around. <laughs> Seems pretty amazing. After supper, night, the pastor looked over. Your pastor's really pretty brilliant, and he really has got this keen mind. He looked over at us and he said, you guys are really quite different, aren't you? And it was like, duh! <laughs> you kidding me? Oh, you don't even know the half of how different we are. I was raised in a family that never lowered their voice. She was raised in a family that never raised their voice. Oh, man, what a circus. She's just, it was like. First time she was at a family gathering, my family, she looked like a woman at a tennis match. It was just exploding all over, and she's like, I, I mean, it was like you could read it on her face. What have I gotten into here? And then when she realized she's got me for the, for the duration, I don't know what she felt that day when that really dawned on her heavy. Oh. We don't want to talk about being filled with the Spirit like we're talking about, well, I got married in 1973, I got married, whatever. We want to look at it like, I'm being filled with the Spirit right now. And I'm going to just tell you by straight up faith, I'm being filled with the Holy Spirit right now. Now, I, I'm not manifesting any type of 
necessarily gifting at this point. I'm not overly emotional right now. I don't feel really highly blessed. I don't feel depressed. I'm, I'm just being filled with the Spirit right now. As I walk in obedience to Him, I'm being filled with His Spirit. Now, what does that mean? Then that means He will give me power to live a holy life. That will, he will help me make the right decisions. He will inform every decision and choice I make that I let Him. He will make the Word of God come alive if I let Him and expose myself to it. He will give me strength and power that I don't have. He will help me when I grieve. He will help me when I hurt. He will help me when I'm angry. He'll help me when I'm blessed. He'll help me when I'm outside or inside. He'll help me if I'm preaching or not preaching or getting ready to preach or not even thinking about preaching, which doesn't happen to me often because I do that. I preach in one of these meetings 42 to 43 times a year, so I'm either getting ready to preach or I'm preaching or I just got done preaching. In between, I like to eat a little chicken. So there you go. Uh, and tonight we had homemade lasagna, and that was amazing. And, uh, and then we're, tomorrow night, we're all going to eat together. Right back yonder to end the hall. Won't that be nice? Amen. Mm. But I'm being filled with the Spirit. Now, will I sometimes be emotional? Yeah, sometimes I'll feel so blessed with His presence, I don't know what to do. Other times, I will feel as flat as a, as a two before, but I'll still know I'm being filled with the Spirit because I know it not by, by feeling, but by faith, and His Spirit is in me. Amen. Continuous action. Okay, you've taken this pretty well. What's the third little Greek lesson? Imperative mood, not a suggestion. Present tense, continue action, habitual, lifestyle, be filled, continue to be filled. Third one, oh, hang on, hang on, you ready? Passive voice. What's that mean? Here's what it means. You can't do this yourself. He must do it. He must fill you. You're the one being acted upon by him. So that rules out all this stuff of trying to work something up. We're not trying to work something up. We're letting him come down. We're, we're not trying to affect a mode or a demeanor to make it appear as though he's here. We're just going to let him be here. A lot of folks want to, want to try to get, get a lot of emotion involved, and, and, and that's fine, and I like it. I like emotion. Listen, I grew up in the church when people shouted. I grew up in the church when people wept. I grew up in a church in a time when people would come to the altar. They would literally weep. They would literally confess their sins. They'd tell everybody. And they'd break through. And they would have, and you watch change lives. Now, listen, I like that. I like that. Now, the, the atmosphere has changed quite a lot. Would you agree? But I'm also aware that you can, if you put too much confidence in the emotions, that when the emotions are gone, you're going to doubt your faith really bad. And you're going, to, you're, going to, man, you're going to hit the wall and go, man, I don't feel blessed anymore. What did I do? Did I grieve God? No, he doesn't operate that way. Y'all still here? That's why the scripture said, it's not by power or by might, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Well, there's your Greek lesson. Now let's just walk, walk it back a little. Let's talk about the person who's filling us, the Spirit of Jesus, the Spirit of Christ. The Holy Spirit is filling us. And he's equal in every way with Jesus, and he's equal in every way with the Father. And you say, can you explain that? No, I've gra I thought about that today. I thought about that today. I thought about trying to explain that to somebody that's never even heard of it, and how you would talk about one God, three, person, three persons, three manifestations of who he is, Huh? It's hard. That's why, that's why when you're dealing with uh, uh, people like Muslims and others who have no room in their thinking for, you know, the Lord our God is one God is the, is the Shema from our Jewish friends and, and our Muslim friends, you know, uh, Allah is, is God and his prophet is Muhammad and, there, and there's no Jesus, there's no son. Of Muslims believe in Jesus, but they don't believe he's the son of God. And I had a 20-hour discussion with a Muslim, a brilliant young Muslim from the United Arab Emirates on a train in Ukraine one afternoon and evening and into the next day. We talked about it all night. And I couldn't budge that guy. Of course, he didn't budge me either. And we had a wonderful conversation. And I've prayed for years since then that the Holy Spirit would reveal to him what we were talking about. And that's, only the, that's the only way that it happens. But Holy Spirit, it, he's, he's God. He has a personality. You can grieve him. He rejoices over us. Uh, he's happy for us. He, he, 
He's the person that fills us. He, he's the Spirit of Jesus, man. And everything that Jesus was walking around with those disciples, the Holy Spirit does in us. Isn't that awesome? So what's that mean? Well, that means really you're never alone. You feel like you are. But that's why we need to cultivate a relationship through the Spirit and say, Lord, I know you're there. Holy Spirit, I know you're in this room with me. And I, I feel awfully alone, but I know you're here. That's a good declaration to make. Say it out loud. I mean, unless you're, you know, you're in a, in a bus or, you know, talking to somebody on the phone, they might misunderstand. But I mean, you know, often just go, hey, Holy Spirit, thank you that you're here right now. Thank you that I'm not alone. Thank you that you're showing the love of Jesus to me in my heart right now. Thank you that as I read this Bible that you're making it, you're making it connect with my spirit and my heart. Thank you that you said you would never leave me alone, so I feel alone. Okay, I'm going to tell you a mind-blowing story. I heard this old lady preacher years ago in Florida. She's from somewhere in the Carolinas. She's an amazing old woman. Uh, tremendous. Uh, been preach, preached for over 60 years. And I don't know what to think about women preachers, but uh, if you didn't like them, you should have heard this one. Wow! She could she preach. And in her later years, she just traveled around trying to encourage pastors and people. But there for a time, she was a pastor someplace in North Carolina. Anyway, listen to this. One morning, uh, right during the song service, she had an arrangement with her song leader that if she stepped where he could see her, uh, then he knew that she wanted to change songs or something or, you know, just make an adjustment according to the Spirit. So she felt impressed. She felt deeply impressed in her heart. We need to, you need to sing when the healing waters flow. Now that's an old-time song, and they weren't singing old-timey songs that day, but she felt it, and it was so strong in her heart. So she stepped where he could see her. He looked at her. She said, do you know when the healing waters flow? He said, yes. He said, let's segue and sing that. And when they started singing, listen, are you ready? When they started singing, when the healing waters flow, a young woman in her early 20s jumped up out of the, near the front of that church, and the church was big and filled. She ran back to the area where the kids were, grabbed up her toddler child, maybe two, brought him back in the service, brought him to the altar, and began to weep at the altar. Suddenly, all kinds of people gathered around that precious girl, to help her pray. It all broke loose when, when the pastor started, had him sing, when the healing waters flow. So they just kept singing it. Now by now, people are coming all over the place to the altar because the Spirit of God was moving. So the pastor went down there and got down in that heap of people and kind of pressed her way in and got to the little girl down there praying. And her little boy was still kind of in her, she had him in her arms. And he wasn't well. He, looked, he, he didn't look well. <clears throat> And the pastor said to the girl, Honey, what in the world is going on? Why did you jump out and run and get this child? And she said, Well, I'll tell you why. She said, My boy's been sick, and he's just been getting worse and worse. And the doctor just thinks doesn't know what it is and, and won't give me an answer. And, and, and everybody that was praying for her knew that her old sorry husband had left her and divorced her and left her with that child and left her without any means of support. And she said, You know, Pastor, you told me when all that happened, that God would be my husband. And she said, yes, honey, I did. She said, well, I took you for your word. And last night, I picked my baby up and I laid him on my bed and I knelt beside the bed and I put my hands on my child and I said, Jesus, our baby is sick. Now that's taking it literally, isn't it? She said, Jesus, our baby is sick and we need help. And she said, the Holy Spirit is clear as she ever had an impression in her heart witnessed in her spirit and said, tomorrow at church, are you listening to this? Tomorrow at church, when they sing the healing waters flow, you bring that baby and I will heal him. Now think about all that had to happen there. The pastor didn't know till that service was well on its way and touched her heart and she said, we must sing when the healing waters flow. She was obedient. When that girl heard it, she knew what God had said was coming to pass. Now, only the Holy Spirit of God can make that happen. You can't make that up. I mean, you can't orchestrate that. That's got too many working parts. So, 
the pastor just reached over and put oil on that little child's head and said, in the name of Jesus, we ask you to heal this child, Lord, today. She said, while my hand was on that child's head, she said, I watched color come back in his face. And said, he perked up and looked at me and smiled. And she knew his name. And she called his name and said, honey, would you like to come up here on the platform with the pastor? And he said, yeah. He'd never been up there. So she took his little hand, and they got up on the platform. And, she, and now she was elderly when she did this. She said, honey, do you want to run with the pastor? She said, can I? He said, she said, yeah. So they ran back and forth across that platform holding the hand of that little child who'd been sick for the last two or three weeks. Let me tell you, that pastor said that when they got to running back and forth across that platform, that place exploded. People praised God and shouted and clapped their hands and just praised God for what they were seeing. Now, how does that happen? The person of Jesus filling us is very interested in touching us and helping us and empowering us. And he's not distant. He's here. He's in us. And he wants to do more than we're letting him do most, most of the time. And in the... I tell you, since last October, man, the Lord's been dealing with me, saying, come on, don't hold back, don't hold in, just let me do what I want to do, amen? Bam. Just think about the power who's filling us. It's not our power, it's his power. It's directed, focused power of God. It's not, it's not, it's not mysterious, it's not a tingle. If you're looking for a tingle, how do you, you can stick your finger in an electric socket. First time I kissed a girl, I got a tingle and had nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. I can assure you that. <laughs> Every once in a while, I'll hit my elbow in the corner of a table, and there's a tingle, but it ain't got nothing to do with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And, and I, can watch, I can watch an emotional movie, and I can, I can weep, but it has nothing to do with the Spirit of God. It has to do that I'm an emotional person, and, and I can react to something that has emotional impact. And I can emote, but emotion is not necessarily the Spirit of God. But the Spirit of God will touch our emotions from time to time because he knows sometimes we need to laugh. Sometimes we need to cry. Sometimes we need to praise God. Sometimes when we can't even pray, he hears us when we're groaning and we can't even form the words. And he knows exactly what's going on in our spirit. It's his power. And it's his purity that fills us. And we need help living a holy life in this dirty old world, don't we? And it's his passion that fills us. Now, I've got to tell you, passion is not noise. Because if passion was noise, I am one passionate guy. And if passion is noise, then my wife has no passion whatsoever. And it's totally wrong. That's not true. She's passionate about the things of God. That's how, since she was in the third grade... She's battled migraines. We don't know why she's not healed. I have, some of the, I have some people that believe in healing and are praying, and I have one friend who has, has seen God heal people as he's prayed for them, prayed for her at a McDonald's near Columbus, Ohio, and said to her, Honey, I am not going to stop praying for you until you're healed. Now, he said that last fall. September, October, November, December, January. She knows that God's in control, and she believes that God's going to heal her. She doesn't know when. She said, I'm going to trust him till he does. Now, the Holy Spirit can help us. Huh? It's like the old Jewish man said. Yeah, if God will provide. If only he'd provide while he's providing. But he does provide while he's providing. That's the Holy Spirit. It's his passion, not ours. But passion says, I believe this, I would die for this. Passion says, I'll be there. Passion says, you can count on me whether I feel like it or not. Uh-oh. The police from Kentucky finally caught up to Georgia, and I, well, it's sure been good being with you. All right. Don't tell them which way we went, all right? And it's his purpose that fills us. It's, it's the Jesus living in us through the Spirit who keeps us focused on what it is that's the most important thing. So I'm asking the Lord to keep filling me with his spirit. I'm asking the Lord to give me an uninhibited zeal. Uninhibited. 
You say, my goodness, if you were any more uninhibited, we couldn't deal with you. No, I don't mean that way. I mean, not afraid to believe the promises of God. I, I mean, don't, don't listen to what people are saying. Listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Listen to what he's saying in his word. Don't listen to other people. Don't listen to everybody's bad report. Don't listen to everybody's bad experience. Just say, Lord, I'm trusting you. Amen. Give me an undaunted loyalty. Lord, I'll be loyal to you no matter what happens. Amen. Lord, I'm not going to quit on this. How about an unquenchable passion for Jesus? Man, I want that more and more. I want to be reckless in my devotion. I want to be ridiculous in my joy. <laughs> they were singing a song in Northern Ireland a few years ago. <laughs> it was about how David danced before the Ark of the Lord. <laughs> Got down to his skivvies and his wife didn't like it. And, and, and the, the song said, I'll be even more undignified than this. <laughs> Some of our churches, we got way too much dignity. Nobody would ever let the Holy Spirit express himself in any old way, you know. I like it when people are just open to the Spirit of God. Amen. See, when we do that, then we'll, we'll do what he asks us to do when he asks us to do it. And we won't be worrying about the outcome. We'll just say, okay, Lord, if you want me to do that. There's a young man serving as an interim uh, intern at a church in Ohio and they'd been t really studying and praying about allowing the Holy Spirit to fill them and use them out in the real world and so he went to this coffee shop on his way to church and uh, he ordered coffee and he, and he talked to the girl I think her name was Leslie behind the counter and he could tell that she was favoring one ear over the other to hear him but that's about that's the only impression he had and he paid for his coffee and left a tip, and he went out and got in his car, and he was driving away. He just felt this strong impression that the Lord says, the next time you come in here, I want you to pray for Leslie. He said, I want you to pray for her. She's been through some hard things, and she needs to feel my love. So it wasn't, it wasn't you know, coffee hounds, we're, we're going to be back, okay, even if it's too much. We're dumb like that. We'll show back up. So he went back. But before he got back, the Lord ministered to him and said, she's, she's had a rough life, and the reason she can't hear on that one side is she was beaten by her boyfriend in a bad relationship, and he abused her in a lot of other ways. And she got away from him, and she's moved down here, but she's been through it. So we went and ordered his coffee. He was nervous. He'd never done anything like this in his life. He got his coffee. He said to her, Leslie, do, do you mind if I just pray a short prayer for you? She said, here? A lot of people think the only place you could pray would be at church or a confessional booth or just before the semi runs into your car. <laughs> And, and she said, okay. So he just stepped around the edge of the counter, put his hand on her shoulder. So, Lord, I, I pray that you'll help Leslie today. I pray that you'll bless in her life. I pray that you will let her know how much you love her. And, Lord, I ask you if you'll touch her ears so she can hear better. And I thank you in Jesus' name. About that long. And the, and the girl looked at him and said, Thanks. Now, she told the rest of the story to the pastor and the intern when she showed up at church. She said, after that young man left, I thought, man, that was odd. And she said, I had, I had a break time at somebody else's taking, watching the shop. She said, I went outside. She said, I went outside to smoke a cigarette. She said, while I was smoking my cigarette, I was talking to somebody on the phone. And I said to them, why are you yelling into the phone? And then she realized that she, that was her bad ear. And then she took the phone and she looked at it and she realized, Jesus answered that boy's prayer. So she showed up to tell him what had happened. And in the process, 
They let her know that Jesus could not only heal her ear, but he could heal her heart and give her a new life. And he did. He said, I bet she's a full-time member of their church. No, she's not. She doesn't go to their church. She goes to another church. Their church is 30 miles out of the way. But they helped her find one. But they helped a young woman find Jesus. Why? I'll tell you why. Because that kid walked in there to buy his coffee, and he was filled in love with the Spirit, and he was trying to learn how to pay attention. And that day he got it right. Now, we don't always get it right, and sometimes we'll miss an opportunity. But if we miss an opportunity, then ask God to help us do better the next one. Amen. Don't live in grief about missing opportunities, because sometimes you don't know if you had one or not. You walk away from a thing, you said, I've said something. To, I, man, that wasn't clear to me. And you don't go around putting your hands on people indiscriminately and randomly, you know. But the Holy Spirit will show us what to do. Amen. So I want to I let some of that out, don't you? Jesus, I want you to fill me with your spirit. I want you to keep filling me with your spirit. I want to have a renewed mind. I want to have a righteous spirit. And I want to have a rooted faith. And I want to get this, man. I want to do this. I want to let the Holy Spirit help me. Don't you? Well, you had your Greek lesson. I told you a couple of stories. We looked at the word. It's all true. Now, here's what we're going to do. If you would like to pray about anything that's on your heart and any burden that you're carrying, and you would like to just say, Lord... If you'd help me with your spirit, I would just be open to anything you want to do in my life tonight. Without any yanking and jerking and psychological anything, just we could spend some time in prayer. Do you want to do that?